Hey guys, I'm Chris Ignato and you're watching my YouTube channel. So thanks for watching. But I really needed to make this video today because one of these is a gift for my friend, uh, Alaska Joe. And I want to surprise him with it and I want to give it to him soon. So I got to do this video. Um, so I barely know what I'm going to say. Just going to improvise this one like I usually do and get this going. Now, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the improved military modular sleep system. Uh, basically, sleeping bags. <laughs> uh, this one here is second generation. This one here is third generation. Okay? And I'm going to compare the two. Now, I've got them in compression sacks. This sack needs to be a little bit repaired. It's not in the best shape. Number one, I recommend you buy these things used on the internet. Just shop around, okay? This one, uh, since this is second gen, this is going to be cheaper now because these guys are phasing them out. I've seen these for $200 and less. I've seen them for more than that, but they shouldn't be. It's well worth the money. And, you know, if you buy one, if you manage to find one for $60, if it's got any, you know, damage on it, you can repair that damage. You know, it costs you a few dollars for a patch as opposed to several hundred dollars for a bag without damage, you know? It's just, you do the math. Okay, that's a little bit better. So this will be sold. You'll find this online as the MSS four-piece system. This one's a five-piece system. The reason why it's five pieces is it comes with two compression sacks, uh, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. This one comes with just one compression sack. It's got a lot of straps on it, a lot of buckles. That does add a little bit of weight. If you don't mind spending the extra money, going by yourself, an independent compression sack made for sleeping bags, you know, or something like that, just buy a different sack. It'll weigh less, probably be a bit more rugged. Now, here we go. This is the second gen. I'm gonna take it out of the sack and tell you a bit about it. I wanna uncompress it first. That's always a plus. really makes a difference when you uncompress it. Never store your sleeping bags compressed. The only time I ever compress them is when I'm traveling with them or camping. Never store them compressed. In fact, it's recommended to like hang them when you're not using them because you want it to maintain as much natural loft as possible. That's the insulation. When you compress these things and store them that way, you're ruining the insulation of your sleeping bag. It's not gonna be as warm. Which brings me to another point. When a sleeping bag tells you it's good to like 10 below, that means you will survive 10 below. It doesn't mean you'll sleep comfortably at 10 below. Another thing to keep in mind is females generally sleep cooler than guys. So if, if something tells you a sleeping bag is good for, you know, zero degrees that's usually for a guy they don't tell you this but a girl it'll be comfortable more at like 10 or 15 degrees above zero Fahrenheit so keep that in mind okay so if it's says it's you know good for 20 below that means generally it's good for 20 below for a male whereas for a female it's probably more like five below or something like that you know just something to go by everybody sleeps differently everybody has a different comfort zone these are just guidelines. And remember, they mean survivable, not comfort, okay? Pretty important. These are also designed for people to be able to sleep in them. Like, both of these are survivable at 50 below zero, they claim to be. Uh, but that intends you to be wearing your cold weather thermals, the military ones, you know? And using a mat, a ground mat. It's a big difference there. So, you know, and that's only for four hours. You know, I did sleep in one of these wearing nothing but a pair of pajama pants um, in like 17 degree weather. And I was pretty comfortable. I was in a hammock, I had no mat or anything. And I had the entire system. So pretty comfortable. I was actually pretty impressed. So that's really cool. Why not buy one intended for mountaineering? You know, a serious one. Um, because it's gonna weigh a fraction of what this weighs. These things are like 10 pounds, 10 to 11 pounds. That's pretty heavy when you think about it. 
for the military, that's not such a big deal. And these are also extremely rugged. In the military, that's a, a factor, right? For an average civilian, it doesn't have to be as rugged as this. These also allow you to sleep in them with your rifle, okay? And your combat boots on. And they're designed so that you can pull apart the zippers and get out quickly for obvious reasons. So that's all pretty neat. Other sleeping bags are smaller. You know, they, they don't allow you to sleep in there with your rifle and uh, stuff like that. These are mummy bags, so you've got that mummy shape going on. You have the fan tail and things like that, you know, it all makes a difference. I like the mummy bags. And I also recommend you store your clothes, like your pair of pants or something, in the bottom of the bag. Helps keep your feet warm. When you wake up in the morning, you put those pants on, they're not going to be freezing cold. I always recommend that. Uh, it makes a big difference. I hate waking up in the morning when I'm camping with freezing clothing to put on. So I always try to put something in my uh, sleeping bag. Help keep it a little bit warm when I put it on. Now, these both come with an outer layer bivy, which is windproof and waterproof. So you don't need a tent. You can actually, this could be your whole shelter if need be. It's a lower profile than having a big tent set up and stuff like that. And honestly, you don't have to bring as much stuff with you. I like to use this in conjunction with a tarp. You're good to go. Um, or a hammock, because I love sleeping in hammocks when I'm camping. You can actually get away with using just this in the summer sometimes, and it's real nice. If it rains out, you're going to stay dry. Inside, check out these heavy-duty zippers. Really nice zippers. I don't have the bivy sealed up right now, but I could if I wanted to. You know, I could just zip that right up. I've, uh, the second generation comes with this black bag. This black bag is good to uh, 10 below zero. Really nice. The summer bag is good for around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? And it's pretty lightweight. If you're camping in the warmer time of the year, you just bring this. Uh, if it's in the summer, you could go to just bring in your bivy, really. But, this green one is pretty good, actually. I like this green one a lot. Um, the second generation has these different colors going on. The third generation, they're all relatively the same color. These ones, you can really tell the difference at night as to what layers you're using and assembling and stuff like that. So you can, what's my favorite thing about these is, you can actually see the, the buttons on them. So you can button it. You can button each layer to the next layer. It just snaps in there, okay? And that way you're not getting everything all mixed up and stuff. You can undo the zipper, look at this. You can just pull the zipper open. That's normally not recommended to do. It's a really bad thing to do to zippers, but these are designed so that you can do that if you need to. They do cinch up around the face. They've got that little hat thing that you can put your head in. You can pull the cords and close these up around your face. I don't like sleeping with my face inside a backpack. The CO2 pretty much always, or inside a sleeping bag. The CO2 pretty much always gives me a headache. So I like to keep my, my nose or my airway exposed to the actual air, even if it's cold, uh, just so I don't get that killer of a headache. But these are really comfortable to sleep in. And then you button the layers like that. It's, I just love that. But you could pull the layer out and all that stuff. Now when you combine your 30 degree layer and your negative 10 degree layer, this is good for negative 40 below zero or even 50 below for you know four hours or so if you're wearing your thermals and stuff like that. Um, when you're camping below zero, I recommend you putting on some of that, the thermal underwear or, or things like that. Always keep that in mind. Um, when I camp, I often get somewhat moist, you know, when I'm sleeping in a sleeping bag because of the fabric itself. And these ones aren't that bad, which really surprises me because it usually drives me nuts. Often what I have to do is buy one of those felt or fleece type sleeping bags for like $9 and slide that in so I don't have this stuff against my skin. Um, and it makes me sleep drier. This isn't that bad though. Um, but if you get one of those, those thin fleece things and put it in this, you can really zero in your perfect temperature by mixing and matching the different layers. So that's pretty cool. This one right here is all three layers combined, and as I said, it's good for around 40 or 50 below if you have to. But you will sleep comfortable, you know, if it's like 10 degrees below zero or 10 degrees above zero. And this is a pretty good system. And for the money, you're probably not going to find a better deal anywhere. 
if you're paying, especially if you're paying about $100 for this thing, you're not going to find a better deal, I think. You might, but I haven't. Um, this is well, well worth the money. Okay. As I said, though, they're pretty heavy, so it's a compromise. Uh, they also have some Velcro in a couple spots, so you can seal it up around the neck. It's a comfortable Velcro. It's not that scratchy kind, so you don't have it scratching against your cold skin. When you stuff these into your compression sack, don't roll it up and put it in there. Just shove it in. Just stuff it in. So that way it's stuffed differently every time so that the loft doesn't have a memory of the same compression every single time because that's going to kind of ruin the installation properties also. So I like to just stuff it in there so it's a little bit different every time. That helps also to maintain its natural loft. Now even though I said the ground is wet, I've got this on it and this is the waterproof layer, the bivy, the outer bivy layer. So that works pretty good for it. Really love this thing. It's spacious. It's good for somebody who's like six foot two to six foot four. They do make an extra large that you have to check for or ask for. If you're somebody who's over six feet, you might want, you know, the bigger one. Six foot one, I'm sure you're still comfortable, pretty comfortable in this. If you're like six foot two or six foot four, you probably want the bigger bag. So you're gonna have to look for that or ask for that. Keep that in mind. These are really nice though, it's a good size. They're not that loud, they're not as loud as some sleeping bags. I don't like noisy things when I'm in the woods. Again, this each one of these passes as its own sleeping bag, okay? That's really cool. I'm gonna zip this back up. Also, the zipper's got a nice fluid movement to it. It's designed not to get stuck. You know, not to pinch the fabric and stuff like that. So it, it flows very nicely. I love this thing. I think I'll leave the bivy the way it is. I won't zip that up. You can also zip and unzip from the bottom too if you want to, which is all, which is pretty cool. Now watch how I put this in the sack. I'm just gonna put it in there. No organization. Uh, the second generation comes with woodland camouflage. Third generation comes with kind of a digital camouflage. Modern camo, as you would expect. So here's the third generation. It's got a much better compression sack in my opinion. This one has a ton of buckles and compression straps on it. This one has less, but I like how it's assembled better. One, I like that it's a bit less. Um, every little piece adds up when it comes to weight. You can already see that the color is different. A lot of people call that the black one. Another cool thing about this uh, generation three, third generation compression sack is this cool little feature here. It's got a cap on it that goes over it and cinches down. So you don't have to worry about a problem like this one's having right now, but that can be easily replaced. They also have on each bag, there's a panel with instructions on what to do in an emergency, how to maintain and repair it, how to wash it. If you wash it, do it in a front loading washer. Don't use the one towards a top loader because that the agitator sticks straight up in the middle will wreak havoc on your sleeping bag. So only wash it in a front loader, um, wash it on gentle, and only partially air dry it, then hang it out to dry for the rest. Important stuff, and I'm pretty sure they tell you that on the, on the bag itself. I might have to go, I think the ranger's coming around. Ah, here you go. When you first get these, they're a little they're a little compressed and I don't like that so much, so I like to hang it out and let it you know fluff back up. Uh, this is the outer bivy layer for the third generation. As you see, it's that digital type of stuff. It's the grayish green type camo. There's that beautiful zipper. It's easy to grip in the cold. It's easy to grip with gloves on or whatever. It's got a, a cord tied around it on both sides, the inside and outside, so you can just grab it and slide it down. Or you can spread apart the zippers. Really cool. This is the winter layer. Okay? Um, actually, this is the summer layer. 
which is good for the, uh, you know, good for 30 degrees. The winter layer here is good for 10 below. So on this one, I got the winter layer and the very inside, I got the, the warmer weather layer on the outside and then the bivy on the outside of that. Here's the smaller compression sack that it comes with. The cool thing about this is if you're camping in the summer, you don't need your winter layer. So you don't need such a big compression sack, okay? So you can just stuff it in here and compress it, tie it onto your backpack or whatever. You're good to go. That's awesome. I really like that they did that. That's really cool stuff. Because as I said, these things are a bit on the heavy side. So this is pretty much the same thing as the other one, okay? It's a mummy bag. You've got the part for your head, the pillow part, on all the layers. You can cinch it up around your face. You've got drawstrings on both sides, which is actually kind of cool. So, uh, and you can cinch this all up. I mean, this is kind of a cool system. Really get nice and snug in here. That's on the cold layer and on the warmer layer. They both have them, okay? Really nice stuff. Really comfortable inside. I wish you could see this. The fabric, well, it's, it's synthetic, and um, I don't have time to pull this all out, but I'm going to. Okay, modular sleeping bag. Okay, what they call the summer layer is the patrol bag. I should have said that, I forgot all about that. Keep the bag dry, which is pretty good with this bivy. Do not bleach, do not press. It actually tells you how to exit in an emergency. That's awesome. Keep the bag clean. It's made by Tinier Industries Incorporated. Um, and it actually has, if you buy one new, it'll tell you who's inspected it and all that kind of stuff. Normal. I love that, that's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind pulling this one out. This is the intermediate cold bag, okay? <clears throat> Same information on it as the other one. Really lofty, really nice, decent sized sleeping bag, okay? Good for somebody who's six foot one or smaller. Again, these are a bit wide, so you can sleep in here with some extra stuff if you needed to. Um, you could even store your weapon in here if you so, so wish to. If you're a hunter or something like that, you know? These are awesome for on the go. Um, they're very rugged, but as I said, they're heavy, so you gotta take all that kind of stuff into consideration. Every ounce counts in a situation, or pretty much any situation. You know, you gotta think, what can you carry around? Again, another amazing thing about this is if you need to, you can carry this around, you don't need a tent. Um, this bivy will even protect you from the wind and all. Uh, I like to have a tent because of privacy or some kind of tarp or something. Say I'm changing, you know, and I'm naked or checking for ticks or God knows what. But that's all up to you guys. Really, this is all you need. You don't need a tent if you're sleeping with this. Some people feel a little exposed. I love to lay up and see those stars, especially when I'm in the mountains or whatever. It's just amazing. We're out in the Pine Barrens. The sky is just so filled with stars, it's insane. It makes your eyes itch. <laughs> There's so many. And I love to, to see that at night. These sleeping bags allow me to do that. Uh, this one is going to cost a lot more because it's the newest one. They're pretty much exactly the same. They're, the only difference really is this one comes with two compression sacks and they're different than this one and uh, the colors are different. Everything else is pretty much the same. You can still handle the same weather and all that kind of stuff in these things. So please keep that stuff in mind. And while I'm at it, let me say something else. When you're camping in cold weather, bring some chapstick with you because you wind up needing that stuff and using it. It's, I'm glad I keep it with me when, I, when I'm out in the winter. And also, having a lighter on you, right? In the cold, you wanna keep that lighter in your pocket. Whether you smoke or not, carry some lighters on you. I carry bright colors so that when I drop them, I can find them easily. I do that with a lot of my stuff. When I was a kid, I had a, like a camouflage knife, dropped it on the ground, it would take me forever to find it. Um, same with my fishing kit, you know? <clears throat> but the main thing about this is when it's real cold out it doesn't work okay I kept it in this outer pocket so it's not working too well normally I keep them right up against my legs you know in my front pocket like this one here and it works okay the cold does not work well with butane lighters I always keep that in mind 
Same with Coleman camp stoves and stuff like that. You want to keep those things on the warm side or else they're not going to work. And that's really hard when your fingers are numb. So that's a good tidbit. Now, I better pack up. Sorry, this isn't the best video on earth, but I really wanted to be able to show you a comparison. Um, I really wish I could take these out, separate the layers and show you, but I can't because I gotta go. Really sorry about that, guys. Amazing piece of hardware. MMSS sleep system. Really good stuff. Um, and as I was saying before, if you're thinking about spending you know, five or six hundred dollars on a sleeping bag. Maybe if you're going to spend that kind of money, maybe you want to buy a professional civilian one made for camping in the Arctic. You know, there's some Canadian ones. There's a bunch of, there's several companies that make some really good ones that weigh just a few pounds. Okay, and they're very warm. Uh, they're a lot more fragile, but with that kind of money being said and spoken of, you know, sometimes you might want to go in that direction instead. You know, they're not going to weigh as much as these things, and that's cool. But they're not going to be as rugged as these things, too. So there's a payoff. You know, it's, it, it, it balances out. So, really, really good stuff. So, I'm Chris Ignato. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit like on the video. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. And, uh... You know, you can subscribe for more videos. So, thanks for watching, guys. And you, stay warm. Yeah, hold on. Well, I'm not able to talk to you, so you need to say. Well, I'm not able to talk to you, so you need to say. Well, I'm not able to talk to you, so I can't 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 talk to you, so I can